Hey everybody, how's it going? It's Nick Leidorf. I've uh, took a little bit of a break when I'm back and uh, thanks for stopping by. I've been doing a lot of live videos this year and I want to bring on people and talk about some interesting things and and I ran into this guy uh, and he's incredibly interesting uh, stories that he has regarding stolen valor, which is something that um, is, is very interesting to me and I know that it's a very hot topic with some uh, cases that are kind of going on across the country. Uh, so without further ado, I want to welcome uh, Craig. So Craig, thanks for stopping by and, and doing this with me. Oh, no problem, Nick. Thanks. Uh, yeah. I, I appreciate you having me on. For sure. Um, so tell me, let's just like back out big picture. So what is Stolen Valor and, you know, and kind of explain to me how you got involved in that. Sure. Um, actually, I kind of fell into stolen valor by accident. Uh, this okay. was before, before I retired from the army. Um, I started working for a, uh, or working with a Sergeant major and I'm an old 82nd guy, 82nd airborne. Okay. And cool. I, I was there for five or six years and, uh, while I, I and I don't remember the dates, but anyway, while I was in Germany, the 82nd went to Panama. So you're jumping on planes, right? That's yep. what that is. 82nd, yep. wow, that's that's uh, I could never do that. That uh, that's literally insane, but yeah, uh, <laughs> that's that's it's, it's thank really you for your not, service. It's, it's really crazy. not that bad, and thank you. I appreciate it. I'd do it all yeah. over again. I really had a, yeah. a great time with it. Well, this is but, my son. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Hey, how you doing? <laughs> it's Julian. All right. So, uh, <laughs> Future comedian. Okay, thanks, buddy. Jesus. Sorry, Greg. Go ahead. <laughs> so I noticed uh, on his uniform, uh, well, first off, after you've been in combat, you wear a patch on the right sleeve. Which, oh, okay. Which shows the unit that you were in combat with. Okay. And I, I noticed that he had a an 82nd patch. Well, okay. Uh, and I noticed on his jump wings, now there's sev several different levels of jump wings. He had basic jump wings, but he had a little gold star in the center of the jump wings, which means he had a combat jump. Okay. So I noticed that. And after I talked to him for a little while, I said, oh, by the way, Sergeant Major, uh, where'd you get your mustard? They call it a mustard stain. <laughs> okay. Uh, because it's a little bit of gold on the wings. Gold. So I, I asked him okay. where he got his mustard stain. And uh, he just kind of looked at me and, and um, he said, well, I was in 319th Field Artillery at, at Fort Bragg and we went to Panama. And I, I just, I, I blurted it out. I just looked at him and I said, I didn't think the 319th jumped. And I, it was dead silence after that. And I never said anything else about it. <clears throat> okay. But, but, you know, a week later, I saw his uniform and he didn't have that little gold star oh, on there dang. anymore. Oh, wow. So that kind of became the joke around the office, how I called him out, but nobody ever really confronted him about it. Oh, damn. That's <laughs> And then I started doing some research on it, and uh, I realized that it was it was pretty rampant. There were a lot of people, especially since 9-11, because okay. we've had troops in combat now, you know, since 9-11 till today. Mm -hmm. um, and some of the stories that are out there, you, you kind of listen to it and you kind of go, Hmm, yeah, it's not passing the smell test. Yeah. So I got involved. There was a website called this ain't hell dot us. Uh, John yeah. Leela, who has since passed away. Uh, John had a, a big site and I worked with him quite a bit. Um, I, I brought a few cases, uh, to light with him. I've got a folder here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and these, these are just the ones that I actually initiated. Uh, and a, as you can see, they're, they're pretty big. And like yeah. this, this first one, this guy somewhere on the internet, he, he was claiming he was a, uh, in the Navy Vietnam veteran. And, one of the things I find, and of course I get all of his records, and mm -hmm. I get the sheets from National Personal Record Center, but nothing. So what, that, is, what is that? So is that something you can? Um, yeah, actually anybody can do it. Anybody can do um, that. 
Yep. Anybody can request military records. So the National okay. Personal Record Center, uh, you fill out what they call an SF-180. It's a standard form 180. If you look it up on the internet, you can find it. Okay. Uh, you can fill that out. There's certain things you have to write on the form so they know that it doesn't require the service member's signature. Okay. You send that in. And then they, they return a, a really nice sheet with a breakdown of whatever their service was. Oh, okay. And I started looking through his stuff, and there was absolutely no way he was ever in Vietnam. Hmm. Because the ship that he said that he was on was never in Vietnamese waters. They had okay. already left by the time he joined the military. So, yeah. you know... And this guy gave me a whole bunch of crap about it, threatened me, he was going to sue me and all this other stuff. And I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. Yeah. Uh, so how? So when we, when does something, because um, there's a legal aspect of this, which is. There is. There's there's a, you, there's, is, there, is there a U.S. code and then also state statutes um, too? There is. It's uh, okay. there's there's a there's a U.S. code on it, and it's it's referred to as the Stolen Valor Act of 2013. Okay. the The original act came out in 2005, and the U.S. Supreme Court basically struck that down as being um, in violation of the First Amendment right. So, oh, okay. what what the U.S. Supreme Court said was, they have a First Amendment right to go out and play dress up. And, right. you know, claim anything that they oh. want to claim. It's their freedom of speech. They can yeah. lie. However, one of the justices <laughs> made sure that they put into their decision that although they have a First Amendment right to go out and lie about military service and that, I have a First Amendment right to go out and tell the truth about their service. So okay. that kind of... A um, little bit of sense, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and it basically... I know a lot of guys that uh, Don Shipley is a big name in um, the Stolen Valor fake Navy SEALs. Don is a retired uh, senior chief Navy SEAL, the real okay. deal. Okay. He, he has access to a database that lists everybody oh, that's wow. ever attempted to go to uh, BUDS training, which is their basic underwater demolitions training. Okay. And, uh, He's pretty flamboyant with the way he goes after these guys because uh, he gets them on the phone and just beats them down, asks them yeah. a bunch of questions. He actually did some road trips and just shows up and, hey, by the way, uh, so you were a Navy SEAL. What was your class number? And, mm. of course, he's already knows the answer. He's never been a Navy SEAL. Right. And, it, and it's pretty hilarious the way he does yeah. it. Uh, as a matter of fact, there was one he did in New Orleans. Uh, this guy was claiming Navy SEAL. He was a big biker dude. Mm -hmm. And uh, him and his wife show up and they just, they ragged on him. And there's videos out there on this stuff. Uh, yeah. Don's, Don's one of the really prominent names as far as that goes. Uh, but the Stolen Valor, let me tell you a little bit about the Stolen Valor Act of yeah. 2013. Yep. So... Basically, it's against the law to have certain uh, decorations and badges, uh, mainly dealing with uh, combat service or valor, okay, and gain any property, money, or tangible benefit. Okay. All right. Now, a lot of the states have adapted that federal law and made their own state law, and a lot of times it they don't even care if you're wearing... Like, uh, for instance, Jeremy DeWitt. I've got a yeah. picture of him wearing a set of dress green uniform, U.S. Army Special Forces. He's got okay. a silver star, which is a Valor Award, which is on the list. Okay. Uh, Combat Infantry Badge, which is also on the list. And he probably had a few more thrown in there. Um, and if he made a claim because of his military service to receive some type of tangible benefit, such okay. as... The reason this guy hired my company is because I'm a special forces veteran. Yeah. Then he could be charged under that statute. Okay. Okay. So the distinction is is you could you could wear 
those pieces of valor. I didn't know that that's what that's called. Like though, so when you mentioned the the jump wings, that that um, with the mustard stain in the middle of it, the the star, that's a um, piece of valor. Is that what, how you it, classify it, that? It is, but it's not actually on the list. I think they oh, missed okay. that. Okay. But like the combat infantry badge, the combat action badge, the okay. um, Silver Star, Legion of Merit, uh, Medal of Honor. You don't want to get caught wearing one of those and not earned it because yeah. that will that will get you prison time really quick. Okay. Uh, so it seems you, they jump right on those. Yeah. So I haven't read that, but I, I'd, I'd like to read it. But that statute. So could you just wear like a silver star? And if you didn't say anything and no one gave you anything about it, could, could you fall into that? Or uh, yeah, you, the... you can get away with it, but okay. we're come we're going to come after you. We're come and... for you. Yeah. Then, so that's, that was going to be my question is like, where does that, where does it fall between somebody acting like a jackass uh, and stolen valor? Where, where does that, is there a line? We, and, and if so, where, where does it cross? We, we still call it stolen valor. Uh, regardless of whether they have, uh, you know, committed the crime of it and, and meet the elements of the crime for it. Uh, but like I said, I've got a first amendment, right. I could tell the truth about them. So I call sure. them out on the stolen valor. And like I said, I just recently started doing these stolen valor little quickies and, and videos mm -hmm. on it. And, uh, you know, it, 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 people seem to enjoy it and, uh, yeah. You know, it gets them out there as well. Yeah. I'm, I'm waiting on records right now. I've probably got, I'll bet you I've got between 12 and 14 requests in to NPRC. However, they've been running at reduced staffing because of COVID. So right. they got like a year long backlog now. Okay. So yeah. who knows um, when I'm going to have new stuff. Yeah. That, it's, uh, and, so I, I mean I can probably guess what the answer is because I, I know you and I have talked about some people that have said that they're they're lawyers and how that makes me frustrated. So I can <laughs> guess how, how frustrating that must be. But share with with everyone why why you're passionate about this. I guess uh, it seems well, obvious, but I'd like to I'd like to hear that. You know, I and I I never claim that I've gone to any of these fancy schools. Uh, I was airborne. I did go to airborne school. I went to air assault school. Those mm -hmm. are two pretty demanding schools to go through in the military. But like for special forces, uh, you, you're you committed for probably a year to go okay. through that. And these guys that just come out and start wearing all this crap and saying they're special forces or, you know, all these other crazy claims, yeah. uh, it aggravates me because they're stealing something that these guys worked extremely hard for. Sure. Um, not to mention the guys that didn't come home. Uh, yeah. That's the big thing. The guys that actually earned yeah. all that stuff and, you know, put their life on the line for the country and didn't come home. And that yeah. aggravates me more than anything. Yeah. There's, there's some veterans out there. It doesn't bother them at all. But okay. uh, I think a majority of veterans, um, yeah, they, they, they have a problem with it. So let's, Let's talk about uh, one that's going on right now. You know, Jerry, Jeremy Dewitt. So let's <laughs> you 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 uh, enlighten me to that one, and I looked into it. Um, but yeah, can you tell us what that guy? He's in Florida, right? This this uh, this character, this interesting character, yeah, this Jeremy Dewitt. This Jeremy Dewitt. He's uh, which tracks, by the way, that a nut job is in Florida. I mean, like it's just it's, yeah, it's, it's it's just Florida man. Is, Florida yeah. man expanded. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so somebody brought this to my attention and they sent me a picture of him wearing a special forces uh, officer's uniform mm -hmm. wearing, I, I couldn't tell what the rank was, but he, then, then they sent me audio clips. He, of course he's dressed up like a cop yeah. and he's, he's spewing all this crap about, um, you know, he was airborne ranger SF. Of course we all know he was a convicted felon. Right. Uh, at the age of 18. Yeah. So none of that ever happened. So yeah. we started digging. Another friend of mine actually got um, sent in a request for his records, and it came back. And, of course, NPRC's like, who? They, they've never heard of him. Right. Uh, so we know he was never in the military, and he kept spinning it and spinning it. But, I mean, all the stuff on the uniform, I – 
and some of the stuff was incorrectly worn uh, and it, it kind of aggravated me. And then the more I, I went down this rabbit hole, it's it's like you can't look so away. He was, he was wearing stuff in a different and wrong place. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, he he was he wearing was, like uh, first off, no special forces officer uh, is going to wear an infantry cord. Okay. Uh, it's they just don't do it. It's just is that little, like the gold the gold thing that you it's would, a blue a blue cord blue. that the infantry okay. guys wear. Okay, I was in marching band, so I, that's the closest. Yeah, thing. <laughs> <laughs> that I know. <laughs> Very similar to that. As a matter of fact, you probably had more time in uniform than he did. Uh, <laughs> that is true. Yeah, yeah. I was in a in the nerd army. That's that's. Uh, I was. <laughs> yeah. So um, exactly. But, okay, so the different placement. So no one he wouldn't wear a cord. Uh, someone in special forces wouldn't wear an infantry cord. Like yeah, that. they they wouldn't okay. wear it like that. Um, okay. But I mean, he said he jumped into Fallujah. Which there were no jumps in the Fallujah. If you know, maybe the guys jumping out of the trucks, but nobody jumped right. by parachute. He said yeah. he had a he had a streamer, yeah, and he hurt his back, yeah. and and, okay. and it and it was weird why he says uh, and that's why I couldn't even become a firefighter because of my back. I'm like, okay, <laughs> just doubling down, yeah, just just the lies on top of lies, yeah. <sighs> I, yeah. I don't know how he keeps them all straight in his head. Right. I really don't. I have no idea. Just to step back for a second, like this probably, I mean, this has probably been a problem throughout any kind of, any time frame, right? From like the Roman Empire to every, to everywhere. But oh. now we have the technology to prove, listen, Jack, we, we know that you weren't in this. And it's just the people still do this stuff. So what, I mean, I, this, you've been... Studying these people for a while, what would you guess is the problem here? I mean, like, what's why are they doing it? It's and you know, I don't think they've ever really termed a, a psychological type thing for it, mm -hmm. but they all have some kind of issue uh, with wanting to look grand. I guess mm -hmm. I, I I don't know, but a lot of them, believe it or not, a lot of them have got. Uh, Felony records of some type. Oh wow! Uh, and there's a large number of them that are actually uh, on sex offender registries. Jeremy mm. being one of them. Oh really? Uh, oh yeah, he's, he's a sex offender in Florida. Jeez! Uh, wow. Yeah, so he caught a felony when he was 18 for impersonating a police officer, and okay. then uh, I think 2004 or something like that, he he. Says he met a girl in a bar, uh, uh -huh. and, and she was underage. However, mm. that's been found to be a lie. Okay, uh, this was somebody that hired him to train some kids or something. And wow. long story short, I I didn't right. really dig down into it. All I know is he's on the sex he's offender sex registry. <laughs> yeah, wow. Um, and I think one of his latest claims is he said he said he went to ranger school with the ROTC. Oh, and I, that doesn't even sound. I've never been in the military, but that doesn't even sound possible. <laughs> no, and it's yeah. it's not. Yeah. Right, uh, it's not. Okay. And I right. had to come out and debunk that right off the bat. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I've got friends over. There's a, a YouTube and a website, uh, Guardians of the Green Beret dot com, and yeah. they do um, YouTube's, and they have a list of all their losers that they've outed as being wow. fake green berets yeah. and um S steve was great about helping me dig down into this to find out if there were any training records whatsoever of mm -hmm. anyone by the name of jeremy dewitt ever going to ranger school and we found that 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 never in fact happened and wow. and it's just another lie on top of a lie on yeah. top of a lie um, yeah it's, um did you see the dr phil uh interview that he did I did. <laughs> that uh, is, so like, you know, from your aspect of it where he's lying about it, all, you know, and then mine, which is his lawyer, let him do this, which I was like, why? I was just screaming at the TV. Like, why are you doing this? <laughs> Tell him to shut up. This is, you know, not helping anything unless the guy just wants to be on TV as you know, that's, you know, which he probably, I can't think of any other reason why you would, why you would do that. He's very narcissistic. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't know either. And the, 
the guy that was on the um, on the the show, mm-hmm. uh, Blue Bacon uh, James, mm-hmm. I think is his first name. Um, they would not let him. They would not allow him to ask any questions about military service. Nothing. Mm. He, that was in his little contract with Doctor Phil show. So oh. he was ne- he was never able to ask him about it. However, Jeremy still wears that Army marksmanship badge on his shirt, on his uniform shirt, wow. and it's got like machine gun and pistol on it. And huh. he hasn't been able to touch a an actual firearm from eighteen <laughs> on. So yeah, yeah, uh, you know it's it it's just insane. The, I the forgot. Jer- they, they, you gave him a polygraph on there too, and he failed it. And, uh, yeah, a like, negative thirty-seven. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, not the, just the guy was, it, like, it was that's, like that's like off the chart as far yeah, as failing. His, really, his face, like he he just held it together pretty well. I guess he's just really good at lying. I mean, that that's just uh, that was just wild to me. Well, you that. know, the the other thing is his lawyer. Um, mm-hmm. His lawyer, he has to know that Jeremy has a YouTube channel for Metro State. Mm-hmm. And he posts all kinds of incriminating videos mm-hmm. of them violating the law by crossing the double yellow lines, running sirens on the motorcycles, banging yeah. on people's cars and screaming at them. I'm like, holy shit. He's yeah. got more incriminating evidence that he's <laughs> posted on himself. Yeah. And uh, I guess they, they raided his office, took all of his media stuff. And I, you know, his he's got- office. No, his his oh. uh, business oh, no. office. Business office. Okay. Yeah. So he's he's going to get time. Uh, yeah. There, there's yeah, no I doubt mean, about it. I mean, I can't imagine that that case is going to go to trial. I mean, there's no way that that unless the the prosecutors are 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 not going to work out some sort of deal. I mean, that which might very well be the case. Um, but yeah, I think that, he's that, been offered a deal and he he rejected it. And, okay. Uh, I think a lot of it has to do with something going on between his lawyer and one of the judges that used to be in practice together. No. So that's kind of a conflict of interest, I would think. Yeah, you, yeah. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, if you're, you're in practice together, I don't think. Uh, yeah, that's just weird. It's not a good look for lawyers when you're when you're doing shit like that. But no, well, um, I, you know. well, that's like uh, Martin. You know, yeah, Rick Martin, uh, my, my pal, my pal, buddy, Rick. your buddy Rick. Yeah, who's you know, who's got out of jail, and he um, he had represented right that he was uh, in. Was, what did he say? Do you remember what one, he said? Remember. There was one statement, and I believe yeah. it went something like, "I was a lieutenant in the hundred and first Airborne yeah. Special Forces Ranger, or something like that." Yeah, and, and when he said it, I was like. Full of shit. Right. You know, the meter was, just pegged. And that was because the way, the order in which he said it? Well, the way he said it, first off, I think he said Airborne Ranger Special Forces. First yeah. off, uh, an Army Ranger doesn't say I'm an Airborne Ranger. Okay. They just say I'm a Ranger. I'm a Ranger. Uh, okay. Airborne is kind of synonymous with that because you have to be airborne because that's what a lot of their operations are. They jump into really bad places like okay. Panama okay. and uh, you know, that that's what they do. That's uh, that's part of their job. Okay. So when you hear somebody start saying, I'm an airborne ranger. Oh, really? Okay. And then you ask them a few questions. So where'd you go to, where'd you go to ranger school? What did, yeah. uh, you know, where was mountain phase? Uh, did you do this or how many days was it? And uh, it's very easy to figure out the ones that are spinning a tail. Okay. Um, Especially special forces. Uh, Mm -hmm. There's a lot of information on the internet. And usually I just pick up the phone and make a phone call and Mm -hmm. say, I got one for you. And uh, he, I know guardians of the green beret really didn't want to go down the rabbit hole with Jeremy DeWitt, but they did. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they posted a video on it as well. So let's, Let's play this out. So Rick Martin says this, uh, says that he's not wearing anything, nope. uh, no pieces of valor. So how would that play into? Obviously, it's wrong in and of itself, but just the the legal aspect of it. I haven't had the chance to read that statute, but would that be a violation of the Stolen Valor Act? Of no, with it? it's no. just a him being an asshole saying something that's not true. Is yeah, that, he's okay. 
Okay. He was he was trying to, and it was during a speech he was giving to some of his uh, yeah. his, his his little cult followers or whatever right. they are. Right. And uh, he he said, I I believe the context before it was, uh, you know, you didn't take an oath. Well, I took an oath, well, that's right. and then he went into it. That's and right. Yep. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So he was just trying to up his level a little bit, mm -hmm. which it, it, it kind of falls in line with the stolen valor guys. Even, yeah. You know what he does that, that persona that uh, what they try to project to people. Right. And uh, it's, it's kind of crazy. He's actually a golf pro. Uh, he used to be a golf pro. I don't know if any, I did some research on him, um, but that's where the hat, came from so like uh, it's kind of a golf pro looking hat that he wears that like yep. straw hat uh but yeah it, it, unless it's two different rick martins which i don't think it is i think it's the same rick martin that he just morphed from teaching golf uh to which i'm sure he probably lied about his credentials on that mm -hmm. too um but and then it just morphs into i'm gonna sell people on defending them in court when i'm not a lawyer which just blows my mind um so th and this kind of stems into Stolen Valor itself, which is our people uh, with like unauthorized practice of law, you know, I, which I think Rick Martin, you know, did that when he was representing someone in court. He says that he wasn't. But so how eager are prosecutors to, to prosecute uh, Stolen Valor cases? Because they're not it's, eager to prosecute unauthorized practice of law, it, which is. No, is, and it's um, it's pretty much the same with Stolen Valor. It okay. is extremely difficult. Um. In a case like Jeremy DeWitt, now Florida's got a pretty good uh, state stolen valor law, and it would probably be really easy. Well, th this is how crazy it is. Mm -hmm. He uh, he was doing funeral escorts. There yep. is a statute for doing funeral escorts, and it tells them exactly what they can do. Of course, mm -hmm. that went out the window the first time he probably went out and started riding around on his lookalike police bike. Right. Um but there was a guy from uh, somebody from Homeland Security that hired him to do an escort for their motorcycle club. Hmm. And he said that the reason he hired him was because he was a, a veteran. Now, if you were to dig down deeper into okay. that, I think they could uh, very easily make the case and meet the elements of the crime yeah. for stolen valor due to that fact. Mm -hmm. uh, but I just, I don't, I don't think anybody's really, uh, it, it's not like the big crime of the century. Nobody really wants yeah. to, uh, especially the FBI. If for instance, uh, up where you're at, they don't have a state statute uh, that yeah. I could find on stolen valor. So it's, it's yeah. just real. It's really hard to get them. Uh, going and and I've reached out to the uh, one of the assistant U.S. attorneys and uh, I forget where their office was. I I called, I spoke with one of them. I was amazed that I actually got to speak to somebody and nice. not a clerk in the office. Yeah, and um, you know she she basically you know patronized me and says, "Well, oh, I'm kind of interested in this," da, 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 mm. and never hear nothing else. So, you know, I, and that's what I expected. I've, I tried speaking to uh, a couple of the FBI field agents down there, but uh, they, they don't return calls. They don't return emails. Hmm. So it's really tough to, to get some of them. Now there have been some guys that have been prosecuted. There was one guy uh, who claimed a purple heart. They were in hmm. a parade and they were on one of the floats and he was with his wife and the friggin' float got hit by a train. His wife oh lost his wife lost her leg. Oh my God. They found out that his claims were all BS and they actually charged him and he spent a year in the can oh. over it. Wow. So oh, uh, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but it was it was really big in the news several Jeez. years ago. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, and, wow. You know, I, 
train. Let's, yeah, let's, they got hit by a train. Yeah. Well, how is that? How does that even happen? How does, how does that? Yeah, that's. I mean, it's karma. And, it's, it's, and then it just, it's, it's yeah. It's, it snowballed from there. He said he got his Purple Heart in Panama when there wasn't anything going on. Mm. And it was because he was doing something down in El Salvador or something. It was just mm. one of these things. And one of the big things, um, you know, you start talking to somebody about their military career. And and trust me, it, it's not all, all these big high-speed, low-drag things that everybody's doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and they start spinning this big tail and, uh, then they'll tell you that all their records are sealed and nobody can get to them and, yeah. and all this super secret squirrel stuff. It's all BS. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. anybody that's ever been in the military, anybody that's ever signed the contract, raised their hand, took the oath, joined the military. There's a record of it. Okay. Every, every school you've ever been to. There's a record of it. The only things that are classified is if you were in a position to be on some type of secret or top secret mission, that would mm-hmm. be the only thing classified. As okay. far as your general military records, uh-uh, not classified. So okay. the minute they start saying, you don't have the clearance to see my records, they're full of crap. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's good to know. Um, yeah. Any uh, any other – and you mentioned the one with the guy – on the float like hit by the train any anybody else that comes to mind any like ones that you that you follow oh, this this is a great one um yeah. there was a gentleman by the name of dan burnaf mm-hmm. if you do a search on google you will find tons of information on this <laughs> they now, call him a gentleman i like i like that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, rest his soul. He has passed away from. Oh, a, okay. All right. Sorry. Cra- another guy from Florida. Oh, wow, what the hell? <laughs> and he crashed his experimental airplane, and that's how he died. Wow. But this was one, and Don Shipley got involved in this, and I'm I'm not sure why. Maybe just because it was Navy. This yeah. guy posts a picture of himself, Photoshop with his head on somebody else's uniform as a uh, chief in in the Navy. Mm. Another guy, he, this guy was a lawyer, believe it or not. What? Uh, yes, <laughs> oh, he no. was a lawyer. <laughs> so Don and his wife, they all go down there. They confront him. This is a big deal. Now, this guy's like filing all kinds of crap against Don Shipley in court, and mm. it's all getting thrown out because the mm. guy the guy doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> and I, this would be a good one for you to look up. Just yeah, I'll that name, look up. Dan Burnaff. Dan Burnaff. Uh, All right. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> that's a really deep rabbit hole. There's lots of okay. videos, and uh, this went on for quite a while. Actually, he threatened. He had lawsuits against John Leela. He was filing papers in every court he could, and most of the you know most of the courts are like, "You're an idiot. This is not how you do this." Right. Um, right. and then Don and Diane got a, uh, a harassment prevention order against them. I'm yeah. not sure if it was a restraining order because of the differences. I know different states have different, yeah, different states, yeah. levels for their, their restraining orders, but it was just, it was nuts. It was completely <laughs> crazy. And, oh, uh, wow. I, I, <laughs> did he end what, what ended up happening? So before he crashed his plane, did he, uh, everything, got, everything got thrown out. There were never yeah. any charges filed because it right. wasn't really a stolen valor okay. per se to the statute. Okay. But it was just a stolen valor that, you know, Jeez. you can lie about it and we're right. going to tell the truth. The U.S. Supreme yeah. Court said that was good to go and that's what we do. So, that's interesting. But, yeah, he uh, he met his demise in a, uh aircraft crash. Wow. So is, I guess karma came full circle on that one. Yeah. Wow. A lawyer, uh, Florida, <laughs> stolen valor. That's that's a movie right there. That's uh that's a yeah. George Clooney could play that. That's a good yeah. um it's a, it's a good it's a good story. Um and I'm so, just trying I'm trying to think if I get any good one, let me just look through my pile yeah. here. And you're and you're I, waiting on some good stuff too. It sounds like I am. I'm I'm waiting on a lot of good stuff. 
Yeah. Um, and a lot of these, a lot of these, I get the letters back, and it's like, who? Because they were never in the military. Yeah. Um, who dis? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We have no no recall of that person whatsoever. So when you get that back, what what's your? Um, do you confront them, or or what's your? I you try know? to. A lot of times. Okay. Um, I'll try and get a good phone number for them, and I, yeah. I will try and confront them. Yeah. I've never, because I'm in a two party state. Ah, I, okay. I really, I really can't record it. All um, right. Luckily, the guy from Guardians of the Green Beret, he's in a a one party state. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. And well, uh, so he he records everything. Okay. And then then at the end, the guy's like, "Are you recording this?" Well, yes, I am. <laughs> oh, yep. Well, you just you just really. Uh, Oh, this was, this was one that, uh, where did I put my glasses? Cause I'm going to need them. This was one, uh, this woman, a woman. Yes. What? I thought this is, this is all, what's the percentage of women to men in this? Um, it's gotta be way more men than women, right? Oh yeah. Way more. Men are stupid. Well, men do dumb things like this. <laughs> oh, there's yeah. a, there's a there was one woman that was claiming she was an army ranger like six or seven years ago, and well, that was it? that was before yeah. the first female actually graduated from ranger right. school. <laughs> that was pretty easy and, to prove. And and she yeah. was like she was probably seventy pounds overweight, and okay. uh, she was chain smoking butts during the interview, and she was a real pisser. <laughs> Um, so this one here, uh, Joy Labarge. Mm. Now she was brought up to me by a friend of mine that I served with <clears throat> and she was claiming to be a Lieutenant Colonel and they weren't giving her her retirement and she was mm. all over YouTube and Facebook and all kinds of craziness. Okay. So I requested her records, and there was a name change involved and a couple of other things, but she was shown to be she, now a lieutenant colonel from a staff sergeant to a lieutenant colonel. That's a huge difference. Right. So she was discharged as a staff sergeant. And they, they actually sent me quite a bit of information on her. I mean, uh, all her awards and stuff. She she was a perfectly, uh, you know, legitimate military career. Mm -hmm. um, you know, she's got joint service commendation medals, two of them. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, commendation medals, NCO, NCO professional development, Army achievement medals, uh Joint Meritorious Unit Award. I mean, pretty fancy uh, career. She was. So she the, was legit. She was. Yeah, in, she was an in intel the... analyst. Oh, okay. Uh, she was. It says here she was stationed at the Pentagon. Oh shit! So she wasn't Jeez. a slouch. No, but yeah. That's... For some reason, something, some cog slipped off the right. shaft or something. Yeah. And she just started saying she was a she was what they call a dual status where, but, and even that didn't make sense because it shows where she went into the reserve, but she was still enlisted. She wasn't, uh, she wasn't a commissioned officer and there's no record of her ever attending OC uh, officer candidate school or ROTC or anything like that. Hmm. But uh, yeah, she even she had some pretty cool stuff. She went to Germany too, and she had some some mm. pretty cool stuff. They actually sent me copies of uh, some of the citations. Mm. <coughs> so you can get a lot of records from NPRC. That's and cool. uh, I watched a couple of her videos, and it was pretty obvious that <coughs> uh, something Someone. slipped somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Um that seems to be a general consensus on a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. I, just, I, I don't know about you, but it just like, you know, the 
the, the sovereign citizens and then these these uh, stolen valor people, they just fascinate me because it's just like uh, I don't know what they're thinking. What what's there's something wrong? You know, it's a blend between you know being undiagnosed a mental illness uh, versus yeah. maybe knowing a little bit about something and then um, trying to represent something that you're not. I mean, I, I just it's so many. I don't know. They, they just have a, a, a huge desire to to, uh, to it, as far as stolen valor. They they need mm -hmm. that praise. They need that. Yeah. Uh, hmm. They need that thing. Um, another guy. While well, I'm thinking of it, yeah, you're gonna love this one. Oh, nice. All right, Florida. <laughs> no, actually, he wasn't in Florida. And what? I I don't have anything really handy here to. Uh, to talk about, I don't, I, I, I can't recall his name right off the top of my head. However, this guy was claiming special forces. He was okay. either in the American Legion or something like that, where he had bullshitted his way in because oh. he he hadn't served in the army. He was claiming special forces. He was claiming all this stuff. Uh, Guardians of the Green Beret went at him. Uh, this guy now another convicted felon. Wow, Jesus! He shot himself in the abdomen and tried to say Guardians of the Green Beret put a hit out on him. <laughs> wow. And they found the gun. Now he shoots himself oh in his car, takes yeah. the gun, puts it in a plastic bag, throws it out the window in the woods. That the police find the gun. Why yeah. they didn't charge him as a felon with a firearm, I don't firearm. know. Wow. But uh, can you imagine shooting yourself mm. to try and legitimize your claims? Yeah. Well, I just, I, and then he tried to implicate that the Guardians of the Green Beret, one of their guys, um, uh, put a hit out on him. Wow. I was like, yeah. Wow. <laughs> I, I I've had people. Uh, one of the 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 big ones I did, and I've got a YouTube video on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I call him the Round Ranger. <laughs> um, this guy posts pictures of himself at his wedding, uh, in a set of dress blues, wearing a Ranger beret on the wrong cock to the wrong side, of course. <laughs> and, Come on. <laughs> and a bunch of stupid stuff on the uniform and. Mm -hmm. He's probably 60, 70 pounds overweight himself. So the, yeah. the button the buttons are kind of stretching. Oh no. <laughs> so uh I start doing some background and it, it, he was out of Lenore, North Carolina. Okay. The and there was a guy that was following a lot of the stolen valor stuff that actually lived in Lenore. North Carolina. He made up a wanted poster of this guy. <laughs> wanted for stolen valor. Oh, damn. They allowed him to put it in the post office and he took a picture of it. It was hilarious. Wow. Wow. But this this guy, he was in the North Carolina National Guard. So I sent okay. an email to their um their PAO, their their uh, personal whatever. I sent yeah. them a an email and they actually <laughs> sent me all of his records, everything he did while he was in the National Guard. Mm. And they redacted out, you know, identifying personal information. Mm -hmm. But uh, he never even finished his infantry training. Wow. But yet he's wearing staff sergeant and all these awards, decorations, Purple Hearts. And then we later find out that he was impersonating a paramedic in Lenore, <laughs> North Carolina. I mean, how do you how do you do that? What do you just show? Do you listen to you the just show up and show yeah. up? What in your Chevy Impala? What are you? What are you doing? That's insane. Oh but wow! There's there's just so many of them out there, and oh. and like you mentioned earlier, it, this has been going on, you know, as far back I'm sure as the Roman legions. Right. I mean, I've yeah. I've read. Uh, if you really dig deep into the internet, you can find stories of guys that were claiming they had a Medal of Honor from the civil mm. war and they didn't. Oh, okay. Uh, and 
Vietnam, there were a lot of guys that that come up with some real whopper stories. Yeah, I was going to ask you, like, what, uh, is that normally the the time period where people will um, claim that, or is it kind of evolving as as you know? As I think it's on? evolving. You know, the, okay. the guys the guys that actually served in Vietnam, they got a raw deal when they came back. They, they for sure weren't, they yeah. weren't treated well. Yeah, and every Vietnam vet out there, you know, welcome home and thank you for your service. Yeah. Uh, but there's a lot of them out there that uh, now that I'm sorry, it's more acceptable to be a veteran, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, now th these guys are coming out with all these crazy stories. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a guy that was trying to, t there was a group of us that are friends. Uh, one of my buddies, Gary, he's uh, a bronze star with a V, which means he received it for valor during Vietnam. Oh. Uh, he was in some really hairy stuff over there. Uh, got blown mm. up by a grenade. Wow! But there was a, there was another guy in the group that was claiming, you know, claim, just claiming crazy stories. And when mm -hmm. I got his records, we found out uh, he was a radio operator and ran a Mars station in Vietnam, which is how <laughs> guys can call home via radio. Oh, uh, <laughs> so yeah, not a lot of. Not uh, not as much as he said was happening. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. And then more recent, because um, I, I joined the military in 1978, uh, in okay. September, and I retired in 2011. It wasn't oh. all it wasn't all active duty. I did have a break in mm -hmm. service after the Gulf War. I was in the reserves, then guard. Then I managed to get back active, and I went into what they call sanctuary where I had 18 years of active duty time. So they had to retain me uh, for my full active duty retirement, which worked out great for me. When I came yeah. back from, uh, when I came back from Iraq in 07, I was pretty mangled up from carrying all like, I was 48 years old. I was wow. carrying, carrying that gear around every day and both of my shoulders were blown out and I was, wow. I was just a wreck. Yeah. So, you know, the army took care of me, got me all my surgeries. I went into, uh, I went into sanctuary and now I'm retired mm. and uh, you know, that all worked out great for me. But since yeah. it's, since this whole time frame, where, you know, one thing that really touched my heart, I came home on um, my mid tour leave and we're walking through the Atlanta airport uh, in a line to go get our stuff. So mm -hmm. we could, you know, catch our flights. And I mean, walking through the airport, we get a standing ovation. Oh, and yeah. uh, man, I'll tell you, uh, you know, I went from uh, dirty, nasty, and I still was dirty, nasty. I came straight <laughs> off the line. They threw mm -hmm. me on a plane and, you know, a day and a half later, I was in Atlanta because of all the connecting flights and stuff. Mm -hmm. Still wearing the same uniform that I was out in the field with. Wow. Uh, I probably smelt like an old goat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you try and clean up the best you can, but yeah. you know, a lot of times when you had your mid tour leave, depending on where you were at or what you were doing, I was a platoon sergeant. So, you know, I was trying to run my platoon mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, you get snatched out, you're going home for two weeks wow. and, uh, man, it's, it's, it was just. Don't want to be the person next to you on the plane. Kind of a thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it yeah. was great. The stewardesses, they, they were apologizing. I'm sorry, we don't have anything in first class for you. Blah, no. blah, blah. I'm like, I don't care. Right. Uh, <laughs> I've got air conditioning right now, uh, and you're bringing me cold drinks. That's all I care about, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, so that's, that's cool. But it, it's yeah. it's more acceptable now to be a, to, to be a veteran, and I, and mm. I think that's where a lot of the, the Stolen Valor stuff is yeah. is coming out. Yeah. Interesting. Um, so where can we, uh, I see you got your, your at on your, on your picture. So where can we follow you on, on YouTube and, um, tell us what you're doing on there. Uh, yeah, you can, if you just look up MSG retired, uh, you can find my, my YouTube site easy enough. It actually says that I think the URL says mass Jeep on the end of it because I used to, <laughs> I used to have a Jeep channel and I just oh, okay. evolved into this, Yeah, but, um, uh, I kept the same URL, but if cool. you, if you, if you do a search for MSG retired, all one word, you'll find my site. And, uh, 
I've been doing a lot of stolen valor, but I also do a lot of motorcycle content. Uh, I'm going to okay. be going up going up to Laconia next month, and I do a tour. I got a bunch of new camera gear. What's what's, La- what's Laconia? Laconia is uh, it's a bike like a bike week. I don't know if you've ever okay. heard of bike week. They do the Daytona Bike Week, which is really big. Yeah, but I've heard just of Sturgis. Smoke, and stuff, yep, yeah. Sturgis. Okay. I'm going there this year. Uh, I'm kind of wanting to get out and do some really big trips this year. Yeah, yeah. It seems, I mean, I, it seems safe to to do that. I mean, that's that seems like a pretty cool thing where you can all hang out and you're, you know, can be you know go together and and do that. It seems like fun. I've never. My wife won't let me have a motorcycle, so I, I and I would probably wreck it and. Uh, and kill myself so no, I, <laughs> it's I, probably a good thing yeah it's probably a good thing i've been riding since <laughs> i was a kid so yeah uh, and yeah. i've done all kinds of riding dirt bikes uh i actually did uh, about five years of road racing when oh, i was cool. stationed when i was stationed down at uh, fort stewart uh nice. there's a racetrack right there and i yeah i'll give it a shot and uh wow. i did road racing in the the mid 90s and had a lot of fun with it. So yeah, yeah I've I've always been a motorcycle cool. enthusiast, and a lot of the stuff I do, I've got a shop that I go to, and I'll do mechanical videos or ride videos or whatever. Oh, and cool. I do I I just started doing the stolen valor, and uh, it's it's good content. People enjoy it, and uh, you know it's it's built my channel up. Actually, yeah. Jeremy Dewitt's the one that really built yeah. built my channel up. Right. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Jeremy. Man, yeah, thanks, yeah, Jeremy. Sure. Hey, heads up for that because yeah. people just can't get enough of the the oh. Florida man extraordinaire. Yeah, uh, that he's actually become. Yeah. But uh, it's not going to do him any good when he's you know nope sitting in the can for a few years. <laughs> well, then he's going to tell him he's a corrections officer. Wow, well, yeah. a corrections officer. Maybe uh, they'll just give him the keys and say, "Here, right. you do." <laughs> yeah. you know? Right. Right. Uh, well, thanks, Craig. I want to um, thank you so much for coming on and chatting with me. Oh, and, not, and not a problem. I really enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So let me. I, um, I follow your the... stuff. I love your so- oh, uh, sovereign citizen stuff. Thanks, man. I love the breakdown on it. Uh, and who knows? I may have to reach out to you for some uh, legal counsel when right. uh, when my next stolen valor decides they want to get crazy and try and go after me. <laughs> uh, All right. It's always, it's always good to know a lawyer. You know. Yeah. Yeah, or yeah, well, uh, it depends on the lawyer, but you know, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm not yeah. going to call Rick Martin. That's, right. that's not happening. <laughs> Why? He would, he would, he's a constitutional scholar. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, thanks so much. Hang out. If you want to hang out real quick, let me say goodbye to everybody. And sure. um, yeah, all right. So, all right, say, uh, make sure you follow Craig. Uh, got some great content there. Um, so, I want to thank him for stopping by. And thanks for stopping by again. And, and I'll be doing some more videos. and got some upcoming collaborations with some people too and i'm doing comedy again too so i'm really excited i got uh, ann arbor comedy showcase coming up at the end of the month here i will be featuring for one of my my really good friends um rob jenkins who is who's been on my show here before so thanks a lot for for uh stopping by you guys and i hope you have a great uh, great rest of your night All right, thanks a lot